It's no secret that in Rocket League, being able to hit the ball hard, fast, and accurately isn't just an important skill, it's arguably its most vital. Whether you're on offense, defense, on the ground, off the wall, you can and need to learn how to hit the ball with power. Naturally, we will cover both how to train and control power shots, but moreover, we'll be taking a deep dive into all the ways we can generate power as much as possible on our hits. But first, for the first time ever, I'm writing this tutorial as a follow-up companion to this video by Verge on power shots. Because Verge did such an amazing job explaining the dynamics and physics behind power hits in his video, rather than trying to reinvent the wheel, I thought I'd give you a bit of a required reading, if you will. So please, if you haven't already, give that video a watch before finishing this one. When you're ready, let's dig in. As is tradition, I'm including a training pack, one that covers the basics of power shots as well as a few more advanced shots. Ultimately, these are designed to not only learn and train power shots, but to build up to more difficult and awkward scenarios where power shots can be applied. For my PC folks, the code will be in the description, but here it is on screen if you need to grab it. Before we get into the shots, I want to take a moment to discuss some key physics interactions, as well as some car manipulation we can use to our advantage. I'm aware this sort of stuff isn't always as sexy as just teaching you how to do basic power shots, but trust me, the more you know, the more of a threat you can become on the field. Let's first look at dodges. I'm certain many of you are already aware of dodge shots and even air roll shots, but regardless, this is something I believe any skill level can benefit from learning, understanding, and implementing into their gameplay. Like I mentioned in my speed flip tutorial, the left stick has virtually 360 degrees of unique input on the car's movement, specifically in relation to dodges or flips. So if I hold my stick up, I'll flip forward. If I hold it left, I'll flip left, and so on and so forth around the left stick. To better illustrate how this works, I got some help developing a Bacchus Mod plugin that displays an arrow which points in the direction your car would dodge based on the placement of your left analog stick. The front of the arrow represents our leading edge and the back our delayed edge. The main point in showing you this is because I want you to try and think of your car as an extension of your left analog stick. So when we're going for shots or hits on the ball, choosing where to put your stick in order to dodge into it should feel less like a conscious decision and more of an intuitive one. Obviously this sort of thing takes practice, but it becomes much easier to do when you have a more tangible reference of how the car is manipulated by the left stick. With dodges, we can generate power in two main ways with what I like to call primary and secondary contact. Primary contact refers to any contact on the ball in which the ball is struck by the leading edge or the front of the car's hitbox in the flip, i.e. the front fender or hood on a front flip shot. Secondary contact is when the ball is struck by the delayed edge or the back of the hitbox, i.e. the top of the car or the roof on that same front flip shot. While both of these can generate power if executed correctly, primary contact is always going to be stronger due to the momentum of the car's center of mass through its straight line mass. Let me explain. To expand upon the straight line mass portion of vertical video, we know that our straight line mass is flowing through our car from the rear to the nose in a straight line. When it comes to power shots, we get the most out of this by transferring this straight line mass as directly as possible through the ball on impact. Taking what we just learned about the left stick and its relation to the car, we can then use our left stick to manipulate our straight line mass on the fly. So instead of just hitting or flipping into the ball straight on, we can either turn our car or angle our stick in a direction we want to hit the ball. Being aware of your car's dodge angle in relation to your left stick can increase your consistency quite significantly. Beyond that, I found that it helps in forming that mental association between parts of the car as they relate to the left stick. To better illustrate some examples and practical application of dodges in relation to straight line mass, let's get into the training pack. Yes, shot one is as basic as it gets. Just a floating ball and an open net. Obviously, just driving into the ball isn't going to do us any good, so we're going to have to jump into it to hit it. Now, because this is power shot training, the timer is short and will expire if the ball is not hit into the net. If this is your first experience with power shots, don't let this bum you out. If the ball would have gone in had there been enough time for it to do so, then that's still a win. Building a strong foundation is important, and part of that is just making contact. Once we are consistently making that contact, it's time to start applying some force. The simplest and most effective way to do this is by generating as much speed as possible just before or up until the point of contact. Unfortunately, we won't always be going supersonic before hitting the ball, so we want to focus on using dodges to help us create as much speed and velocity as possible in a short amount of time. To get the most out of this technique, we're going to need to make sure we're flipping through the ball, not into it. We want to do this for a couple of reasons. Using the front flip as an example, when we dodge late into the ball, despite making contact, we are missing that window of velocity transfer through the car's straight line mass. When you initiate your dodge, the car is propelled in whatever direction you put your left stick in, leveraged off the car's fulcrum at the center of mass. 
Unlike hitting a ball with a baseball bat or a golf club, however, we don't generate speed through our dodge rotation, but rather from our center of mass. It's for this reason that we want to manipulate when and how we are making that contact. In the case of primary contact, we want the front of the car striking the ball just after initiating the dodge through the earliest stages of its rotation, where the center of mass's velocity would be traveling forward from the car and through the ball in as straight a line as possible. In regards to secondary contact, we can still generate some decent power, but this is where we have to be more considerate of timing. Again, using the front flip as our example, we don't want to simply make contact with the back end of our car as it flips into the ball, but rather strike it against the top of the hitbox so that the center of mass can best transfer its force through the ball. Now, we understand how the center of mass on the car works, but what about the ball? The ball's center of mass functions ostensibly the same way, the biggest difference being that the ball is an object which is manipulated through outside forces, with multiple physics factors being applied simultaneously. When the ball is struck by a car, we obviously have horizontal force being applied, but independent of that, we also have vertical force being applied, which is gravity. Naturally, we can hit the ball at an upward angle to combat the initial pull of that gravity, but again, we have to keep in mind where that force is coming from. Understanding that the force applied to the ball comes from the car's center of mass and not the spinning portion of the hitbox on contact is paramount to understanding power, but more importantly, control. Halfway Dead did an incredible video on this exact topic and how this works. I strongly encourage anyone looking for more in-depth information on this topic to check out his video in the link below. Now then, because timing is everything, we have some adjustments to our car that need to be made in order to control where the ball goes. In the case of our basic front flip, we need to ensure that the car's straight line mass is impacting the ball at not only the right spot on the ball, but at the right time. As our car flips into and through the ball, we have a window where the car's straight line mass is moving in the same direction as our dodge. It's not immediate, but it is very early on in the rotation where this happens. In order to take advantage of this mass transfer, we have some adjustments we can make to help compensate for that window. In the case where we need to cover a lot of ground with our shot, the simplest way to do this is to pull the nose of the car back and up into the air. This prepares our leading edge of the hitbox to make the primary contact at the point where our straight line mass is traveling upward as well as forward on impact. The same thing applies to secondary contact, but instead of pulling up, we're going to pitch the nose of the car forward in order to set up the top of the hitbox to apply straight line force onto the ball. You'll really begin to feel how much more important this technique becomes as we progress from shot 1 up to shot 8. The further away you are from the goal, the lower your contact on the ball needs to be. As far as shots 7 and 8 are concerned, you're going to need to do a little extra to score these. Now, if you watched my video on speed flips, you'll know that the purpose of that mechanic is to manipulate your dodge in order to keep the momentum of the car moving as straightforward as possible. Naturally, we can use that concept and apply it to power shots. Using a very similar motion to speed flips, we want to dodge forward into the ball, but also at an angle. I like to use a little bit of air roll on these because I find it helps me to line up my straight line mass while I'm in the air. Once you have that part down, it just becomes a matter of hitting the ball at the right angle to project your straight line mass through the ball and propel it towards the goal. Bonus points if you can manage to hit the crossbar on shot number 7. Shots 9 through 13 are going to be off-angled shots. These are where you need to start focusing more on placement as well as power. Because of how versatile this whole technique is, it means that there isn't just one way to approach these. In fact, I encourage you spend some time with each of these shots to try and see all the possible ways you can score them, not just to try to emulate some of my examples here. For the most powerful results, we want to try and execute that speed flip motion in these shots. Since these are off angles, however, you'll need to both turn and pitch your car into position so that the forward angle dodge will be going through the ball and into the goal. A good indicator that you've done this accurately is by the shift in the car's direction from where it started to now following behind the ball. Shots 14 and 15 are similar in that they are our first moving targets, but differ in their approach and execution. With shot 14, the ball is moving away from the goal, which means it is going to have a counter force we need to fight against, as well as applying a negative angle change. Not super difficult, of course, just something to be prepared for. In the case with shot 15, this becomes a little bit more difficult to do as the ball is traveling not only away from the goal, but away from you as well. Well, this is a great shot to practice secondary contact since this approach can be difficult for primary contact and really lends itself well to utilizing other parts of the car for power. Shots 16 and 18 are a group of close range shots that are meant to give you opportunities to really learn and practice how to get as much power as possible without having much or any speed. I personally like to look at these not as shots but rather moments in games where I may either be low on boost or short on room and need to get a strong hit. Be sure you're using this set of shots to really experiment with 
with all of the different angles of your dodges and surfaces of your hitbox. Shot 19 is here because I felt like we needed a wall shot, not just because it's another shot you should practice, but rather to illustrate that despite it being one we take off the wall, it doesn't change the fact that everything that we've learned up to this point will also apply to this one. The last four shots in this pack are what I'd consider good in-game situations everyone should be both familiar with and prepared to deal with. Oftentimes, shots like these can come up and easily result in goals, so you owe it to yourself to practice them. Naturally, these shots might not all be goals if defense is in position, but on breakaways or open nets, you certainly don't want to waste the opportunity. I realize this can be a lot to take in, but in my experience, the more you understand how something works, the easier it is to learn and can help you self-troubleshoot situations in which you fail. Sure, I could have made a much shorter video telling you to just flip into the ball when you're trying to shoot it, but I felt like that was leaving far too much meat on the bone of this topic. I hope all of this information makes understanding and pulling off power shots much easier to do. I know it's been a massive help to me over the past few months, and I was excited to share everything that I have learned. A huge thank you to Halfway Dead for both his videos and the conversations we had on the topic, as well as the incredible work by Vink on the Joystick View plugin, link for which will be in the description if you would like to have it. As always, I hope to have more content to come, so until next time, get out there and work on those power shots.